Hey guys, I know that some of you don't find unboxings to be like the most entertaining things in the world, but I always try to make them entertaining, whether I succeed or not. Well, that's up for you to decide. But I do have an unboxing to do today because I went a little bit crazy during the holidays and spent a whole lot of money. And that's part and partial to you guys because you're amazing and you've been ordering my candles like crazy so you guys have been spending money too. I know it because I've been getting it and sending you candles for it in exchange. That's how that works. Commerce. So yeah, thank you guys so much for ordering my candles. You are so amazing. You made my holiday season so, so, so special and so much fun. If any of you don't know what I'm talking about or if you're new here, hi, I'm Leah Mouse. What's up? I make and sell scented candles and you should definitely check them out because apparently they're like super awesome and I have a lot of fun making them and I really like being creative and making things and I'm coming out with new ones. So uh, you definitely want to check those out even if you've already done so because the new ones are going to be bomb. At least I think they are. Otherwise I wouldn't be making them. So we're gonna unbox some books today because I ordered some books from Book Outlet because they're my favorite place to order books from. Uh, a lot of you guys have recommended thrift books in the past and I ordered from them twice now, I think. Um, they're okay. It's just like, I never know what condition the books are gonna show up in because they're used. Uh, Book Outlet is 100% always brand new books unless you buy a scratch and copy and then you know what you're getting into. I prefer to have new books at a discounted price if I can because I'm greedy and unreasonable. So I got um, a bunch of books during their Boxing Day sale at bookoutlet.com and we are gonna look at those together. And it's been a while, so, oh dear, I'm sorry. How rude. And it's been a while, so I don't even remember what I ordered, to be honest. So this will be a surprise for both of us. Paper! And we're done. Okay, so I'm gonna put the box somewhere else, cause it's, oh my, oh. <laughs> my pillow is unraveling. What in the hell? Why? Looks like I got the After Room by Mail Malloy. I believe that's how you say that. This is, I think, the third book in the Apothecary series. I are, I, 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 yeah. I do have the Apothecary and the Apprentice already, and this is the third book that I needed. And I have this thing to where I don't like to start reading a series until I have all the books in the series, because then if I like finish one and I want to hurry up and read the next one, I already have it. So now I have all three, and now I can actually start reading the series. So I'm super excited about that. I got House of Furies by Madeline Rowe. I believe that's how you say that. I'm not good with name pronunciations, so just don't crucify me too hard. And don't crucify me for saying crucify because it's 2019, stop getting offended by everything. Oh my God. But anyway, I suck at saying names. So, you know, these authors, like I've said before, just insist on having names that I can't pronounce. So I look like a fool. Louisa Ditton has nowhere to go. When she is offered employment as a maid at a boarding house, Louisa thinks she has been saved. But soon after her arrival at Cold Thistle House, ooh, I like that Cold Thistle House, Louisa realizes that the house's mysterious owner, Mr. Morningside, is providing much more than lodging for his guests. Ooh! So this is a gothic horror book, uh, apparently. And there's also um, a sequel called Court of Shadows. Okay, so if you're new here, <laughs> you don't know yet about my obsession with memoirs and biographies. I don't know where it came from. I don't know how it started. But for some reason, I really wanted uh, Maggie Smith's biography because hello, Professor McGonagall. Mm. Plus, I know her as Mrs. Medlock. <laughs> from the Secret Garden movie from like the 90s because I loved that movie so much. I made my mom take me to see it in theaters, I think eight, eight times, I believe. Yeah, eight times. I, I know that, I remember that. that, that's crazy. But I was obsessed with that movie and she was Mrs. Medlock and that's the first time I ever saw her. And then of course she was Granny Wendy in Hook that Robin Williams movie. And then of course she's Professor McGonagall in Harry Potter and hello, I work at the Leaky Cauldron. So, you know, I'm familiar. So anyway, uh, this is a new book, so I was lucky to get it at a discounted price. I think it was like $4 or something. And then with the sale, it was even cheaper. So yay, I'm excited to read about Dame Maggie Smith. All right, what else do we have here? Oh, we've got First Class Murder by Robin Stevens. I already have, oh my God, why can't I do this? Uh, murder is bad manners and poison is not polite. They are part of the same thing. It's like, um, it's obviously like a little detective mystery series, but you know, for middle grade. If you're wondering why I predominantly read middle grade, it's because 
I am not a fan of high intense action, high romance stories. Like, give me a good romance plot and I will bleh all over the page. I just, I just don't, I don't like it. I, I don't know why. I also don't like uh, graphic gore uh, or violence or descriptions of, like horrific things because things get into my mind and they sit there and they fester and I picture every single thing that I hear or read. I have a very vivid imagination and it disturbs me. I'm very easily disturbed because of this. So the imagery, if it's too intense, I can't handle it. So that's why I predominantly read middle grade stuff because it's kind of got all the adventure and fun without like the graphic imagery or the stupid love stories that I don't care about. I feel like a good book is always ruined by a love story because nobody gives a crap. Anyway, I really like a middle grade detective series is basically what I was getting to there now that I look like a horrible judgmental bastard. Okay, so um, also if you're new here, I am absolutely obsessed with Sherlock Holmes and I know I didn't pronounce obsessed correctly because my brain stopped, I don't know. But yeah, I love Sherlock Holmes, I have of course, all of the original books in multiple forms. And I'm starting to collect the um, basically published fan fiction, for lack of a better term. I mean, really, that is what it is. Uh, that people write, you know, in the style of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle and try to continue on stories with, you know, everybody's favorite detective. But I collect all books about it. So we've got Echoes of Sherlock Holmes, stories inspired by the Holmes canon. This is an amalgamation of stories written in the style of, obviously, you know, Sherlock Holmes. So I can't get enough. If you like Sherlock Holmes, you cannot get enough of it. And that's why they continue to publish these things because it's more. Even though Sir Arthur Conan Doyle is dead, we can still enjoy Sherlock Holmes stories till the end of time because people keep writing them and it is amazing. Okay, so in the same vein, I also got um, a Sherlock Holmes adventure mystery thing by Bonnie McBird called Art in the Blood. And what I just said about the imagery and stuff, it like Sherlock Holmes mystery stories are like the exception to the graphic imagery because I realized there's a lot of murders and you know, graphic things in the stories, but like for some reason, my brain routes around them when it comes to a Sherlock Holmes story. I don't know, I, my love for Sherlock Holmes outweighs the graphic imagery and I can be like, no, it's Sherlock Holmes, it's fake. It's not really, you know, whatever. It's okay, so I, I can deal with it. So um, it's like my only exception. Watson wants in the room, hold on a second. <laughs> so I look forward to reading this one. Right, let's bring Watson in here. Come on, baby, good girl. This is Watson, everybody. She heard me talking about Sherlock Holmes and she got excited. And yes, that's why she's named Watson because I'm obsessed. Okay, she's done. She's on a case. So continuing with that theme, I also ordered, also by Bonnie McBird, Unquiet Spirits, uh, Whiskey, Ghosts, and Murder, apparently. So this is another Sherlock Holmes adventure by the same author. And this is also hardcover. I prefer to stay away from hardcover. I actually really don't like hardcover all that much because it's harder to read. It falls out of you know, the, the dust jacket, like, you know, when I'm holding it, like it just falls right the F out. I don't like it. So I usually remove the dust jacket when I read hardcover, but it's just not, I don't know, the inflexibility of a hardcover book just makes it not a pleasant experience for me to sit and read. I don't know. So I don't know. Some of you might be like that. Some of you prefer hardcover, but personally I prefer paperback 100% of the time, but those were cheaper and they were cool and there they are. So next we have Winter House by Ben Gutterson. And um, let's see, we've got A Lavish Hotel, A Family Secret, A Book of Puzzles, and A Veil of Magic. Are we intrigued? Yes, we are. I don't know exactly what this is about. And basically everything that I just read to you is all I need to know. Uh, I saw this on a shelf at uh, Barnes and Noble one time and I was like, I want this. Orphan Elizabeth Summers, malevolent Aunt Purdy and Uncle Burlap <laughs> I love these people's names. Ship her off to the ominous Winter House Hotel owned by the peculiar Norbridge Falls. Upon arrival, Elizabeth quickly discovers that Winter House has many charms, most notably its massive library. Ooh! It's not long before she locates a magical book of puzzles that will unlock a mystery involving Norbridge and his sinister family. I'm pausing. Kara will know why. The rest of you won't. I'm gonna keep reading. But as she uncovers the hotel's secrets, Elizabeth starts to realize that she is somehow connected to Winter House for better or for worse. So that sounds like a good bit of fun. This retails for $17. 
Let me see how much I paid for it. Just to give you an idea of what kind of deals we're talking about. Yeah, I definitely paid $6.39 for this. And let's see, we have a Gustav Gloom book. I already have Gustav Gloom one through five, and this is number six. Gustav Gloom and the Castle of Fear. I like this hardcover. This is an exception because the hardcover ones of these have these cool little like see-through designs on the front and um, I, I do have two other hardcovers like this and it's it's neat. I haven't read these yet but I know that they're gonna be jolly good times so I'm okay with like collecting them and hoarding them until I feel like reading something more whimsical. And last but not least we have Sherlock Holmes and the Moonstone's Curse by Sam Sicliano. See? Uh, the names of the authors just kill me. So this is one of those, you know, Further Adventures of Sherlock Holmes series that they make and they all kind of have this exact same art, but they're different authors, you know, different stories. Some of them are really old, some of them are newer. And they sent me a bookmark because they're cool. <gasps> $4 off when you spend $20 or more. I have my own discount code. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Holy crap. It expires in three months. Now that's a coupon I can get behind because they have free shipping on orders $35 or more and their Boxing Day sale was like $10 off a $45 order. So I definitely spent $45 and then it automatically took 10 off, which took it down to 35, which gave me free shipping and it was like amazing. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching me pour through the books that I ordered because I love to read and I love to collect books. I am absolutely addicted. It's annoying. I have way too many books. Well, okay, not way too many books. Mike would tell me I have too many books. I respectfully disagree. Um, I believe this will make in my collection about 520 books that I have. Um, that might be a little, might be a lot, depends on who you are. <laughs> and I'm not ready to stop buying books yet. So thank you guys for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what your favorite books are. Or if you've ever shopped at Book Outlet, what you think or whatever, just, you know, say hi. I don't care. You could say wobbly doo doo fling fling foom If you figure out how to spell that, anyway, you can say that if you really want to. So uh, I'll see you guys in my next video and goodbye.